Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create this um, pretty mesmerizing pattern in After Effects. And this is based on um, Worm Sun by Dave White over at Dribble. He creates these absolutely amazing um, animations in a program called Processing. So this is all done based on code, not based on um, After Effects. So uh, I don't know if it's easier or harder in processing. I guess it depends on where your skills are, but I would be willing to believe that processing actually renders it significantly faster than um, After Effects because there are a few effects that we're going to be digging in. So we're going to be creating something similar to this um, Worm Sun. Um, very small changes make very drastic differences. So we'll just see what we turn out with at the end. So let's just go ahead and jump into After Effects here. And please excuse me, I am uh, recovering from a sickness. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> so let's start by creating um, kind of like the wavy worm. And I'm going to apply a grid here so it makes it a little bit easier for me to um, draw here in After Effects. So I'm just going to kind of create uh, like a kind of a diamond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I will adjust this shape in a second. So I'm just going to center up the anchor point by using this motion tool. If you don't have this, you could just press Y on the keyboard and drag it to the center. I'm just going to shrink this down here and then I'm going to use the align tool to align it into the center. So getting rid of the grids, um, we have kind of our snake. And to get the wave effect, it's actually very simple. Um, you just want to search for an effect called wave, wave warp. And you can see right away that, you know, we're on the right path. So I'm going to increase the width until I get about one full wave per, I guess, snake. So you can see you kind of get one there. And I'm just going to jack up the wave height and maybe extend this out just a little bit. I think that might be a little bit closer to what we're looking for. And then I'm going to bring the wave speed down to like 0.1. You'll see why here in a sec when I hit play. So if it's any faster than that, maybe 0.2 would be better. Um, but it is quite fast. Um, and the way you match up the animations will make it so adjusting this later will be kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pre-compose this layer, control shift C, and move all attributes to the new composition. I'm just going to call this worm. And now I'm going to start messing with this. So I'm going to duplicate it, control D. And actually, I'm just going to select both of these and hit S on the keyboard and scale them down. So <clears throat> let's see here. I kind of want these to be maybe on top of each other. So this is kind of where your artistic ass uh, assets or artistic abilities kind of come into play. But I'm just going to duplicate this layer, maybe rotate this uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Let's see, does that change anything really? Not really. So I'm just going to control Z those away. Um, if I make this a 3D layer, I could change the orientation here and rotate it 180 degrees that direction, which adds something a little bit more interesting. Um, I think what I'm seeing here is that I need to actually increase the wave width, or I'm sorry, the wave height to make it even more extreme. Maybe not that extreme. I'm actually just going to select all these and just drag them over. So finding the right, um, I guess, effect here will determine what your final outcome will look like. But I'm going to just try to replicate what um, what he did on Dribble, and hopefully we come up with something that looks pretty cool.
So I think what you're going to notice is that it ultimately doesn't really matter what you do here as long as it looks interesting to you. Um, so I'm just going to just move these to the center of the composition here. Which I think that looks about centered. And I'm just going to create a layer new null object. And I'm just going to match all of these up to the null object. Now from here I could scale this down and I just want to move this over to the left or the right. I'm going to move this over to the left. And from here, if I pre-compose these now, Control shift c I can now duplicate this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. So that way I have 12 samples. And I believe 12 times 3 is 36. So that should, I should be able to have a, do a full circle here. So if I hit R on the keyboard, I could just start rotating these by 30 degrees each. That may be too much or too little. I might need to do it by 45, but let's just see. 30, 60, 90, 120. And we could just see what this looks like. So it looks far more demonic than his, and I think it's because of the colors. Let me just select all these and scale them down. Or better yet, I can create a, a null layer and just parent all of these to the null object and scale this down by pressing S on the keyboard and just bring the scale down. Now what's funny is that if I come in here and I just move these over, you can see how different that automatically looks. So it really depends on which, what kind of look you're, you, you're going after. Um, if I open up this worm and I increase the wave height, that will make things look totally different. All of these things drastically change the look of the animation. Another interesting thing you could do, you could just duplicate this again. Control shift C, pre-compose that, duplicate it and rotate this by pressing R on the keyboard and simply rotating it and maybe scaling it up. And if you move this over, it basically changes the time in between. So now that's another layer of, of interesting aspects to it. Um, personally, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hit Control Z a few times, because I, I actually think that this looks the best so far. Um, one thing I may want to do is come into this pre-comp and maybe adjust the placements of these worms a bit to make it just a little bit more elongated. I don't really know if that's better or worse, but it's certainly interesting how those, you know, create almost a perfect circle. Another thing, when you jump in here, you can add a gradient ramp to these worms. And if you just change the start of the ramp, to one end and the end of the ramp on the other end and now change these colors to let's say red and yellow. I'm just going to copy and paste this onto each worm. You know, again, that's another layer of, of interest. So um, let's just render this out here and see what kind of effect we get. Okay, so I think that looks pretty cool. Now, I want this to be looped as an animation, so that's kind of where you where your wave uh, speed comes into play. So this basically says that this is gonna do a full wave um, every, let's say, five seconds, I think. 
So that's about right. So this full animation, this animation needs to be five seconds long. So if I end this at five seconds, press N on the keyboard, this should loop perfectly. And it does. So basically all I did was say, so the length of your animation needs to equal one divided by your wave speed. Anyways guys, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out the project file on our Patreon account, and as always, thanks for watching.